Well, welcome to another edition of Bolton in all thanks to Palmer Bet, of course, where we take a look at all things horse racing, including the big group ones coming up and what a big, big weekend it promises to be. And well, Shane Anderson, as I say, a very, very good evening to you, mate. It's only the two of us today because, of course, uh, Adam is uh, is on a plane heading back to Australia for uh, for a big weekend racing up at Ramwick. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic this weekend. Good for Adam to be getting back home. Uh, He's a great broadcaster. You and I both worked with him uh, at racing.com and he's doing fantastic things over in the States at the moment. But uh, just goes to show how big the the spring carnival, uh, particularly races like the Everest, have become now when you're getting so much international exposure. Um, And it's it's fantastic that the uh, US channels are are taking the, the big race and Adam's going to be a part of the coverage. Now, listen, uh, mate, seriously, yourself and Ads last week, you were on fire, let's be honest. Um, it was just magnificent to see. It was just a great weekend. Started off with English Riviera getting the job done and ended up at a nice little price. Two blue out to about seven bucks, Shane. Yeah, it was one of those things, Matt, as I was watching, um, you know, the, the markets move and all of those sort of things. You, you start second guessing yourself a little bit because I remember I was pretty confident about English Riviera at Mooney Valley, the run prior. And she ran third. Uh, it was a good run. Um, but the more I keep looking at her and, and the way, you know, over the years I've been watching uh, Tony McAvoy as a trainer and he and Calvin, how they love to prepare a horse and, and get them just to improve that little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And they've been talking about her as a legitimate Coolmore stud stakes contender at Flemington during the, the spring. So if they're going to have her cherry ripe for the big 1200 metre group one contest, and they're not deviating from that path. I just kept thinking to myself, she may have come on again that little bit from the valley. And I thought she was terrific on the weekend. Uh, yeah, as you said, she got out to a good price. So that helped us along too. But she's a really nice filly. And I think she's only going to keep getting better with time. Um, and it really was a, a fantastic day of racing at Caulfield. It's a shame that we had the wet weather hit Sydney and, and it really disrupt their, their program. Let's hope uh, we don't get a similar situation this week leading up to the Everest. But, yeah, it was a terrific day of racing. And, uh, of course, the, the might and power was just an absolute ripper with Animo getting home narrowly. Yeah, it was an unbelievable race, uh, Shane. And I'm going to get to that shortly, but I just want to – you just touched on it at the start. You've got to be careful as a punter, don't you? When you start seeing horses drifting that, you know, you, you kind of can't look at that. You know, you've done the form. You've sat there. You've picked that horse out for a reason. Um, when the market kind of eases ever so slightly, you do start to panic and you think, hang on, am I reading things a little bit differently here than uh, than others? And you do start to second guess yourself, but it's a classic case, isn't it, of don't. you just got to back yourself in. Yeah, I think courage comes in many forms, um, as the the old saying. But I think it comes down to, I mean, you know, markets will move, and it's markets will will. There's going to be a lot of influences, and I, I think one of the things you've got to really take on board is is how deeply you've done the form. There are some people out there who I've known for a long period of time who love to just follow the trends and follow the money. Yeah, but I think that can be fraught with danger. Um, you know, so I think you've got to have a clear understanding of of the form. You've got to have a clear understanding of, of track patterns. You've got to have a clear understanding of, of, of as many things as you possibly can, you know, pull all the, the sources of data that you can into a mix and hopefully you've baked something pretty special. Um, and sometimes you get it right and sometimes you get it horribly wrong, but uh, I think, you know, you, you, you bang on the money. It's a, a drift is not a bad thing. Um, sometimes it's simply a legitimate market correction because there could be pushes coming from different areas or there could be, simple things like uh, people wanting to play track patterns and so on. But, yeah, I couldn't believe the price English Riviera got out to at the end. Um, But, you know, hopefully we'll get a few more of those types of uh, results over the coming days. Absolutely. Best of Bordeaux, of course, and Animo. What about... What about the might and power? Seriously, Shane, uh, you know, we touted this last week. This is the mini Cox plate. I, I honestly don't know how we get a better race than that, uh, you know, next week, if you know what I mean, head, heading into a Cox plate. We're gonna. It's going to be on. But it was just an absolute ripping field, ripping finish. Great call by Matty Hill, as always. Um, God, it's exciting this next kind of eight or nine days, isn't it? Yeah, we had a few uh, – you've summed it up really well. I think there's so many good things that came out of the, the might and power. First of all, it is a – Ripping contest in its own right, big money, but it's always a really, really important guide for the other big races coming up. So all of the big guns heading towards the Cox Plate were there, and they've all run really well, I think. Animo, terrific. Okay, the margin wasn't great, but he had to dig deep, and, you know, more than likely he will come on from that again as he goes to the Valley. And I think he's, you know, legitimately the worthy favourite for for the Cox Plate. Um, Those behind, I'm Thunderstruck, has gone very, very well. You know, he really challenged strongly over the concluding stages, wasn't beaten far. And Shane, can I just ask you, so the 2,000-metre myth there about uh, I'm Thunderstruck being put to bed now, surely, hasn't it? 
Yeah, I think so. I think so. Look, he was he was super strong. He didn't shirk the task. And yeah, he was he was as strong through the line as those around him. So I think he's bang on target. Um, and he'll probably run, you know, really well at the valley. Uh Zaki, um, you know, I think if Zaki can get a good lead on his own pace in the Cox plate, he's gonna be right in the thick of things. So I think you go through that uh, might power stakes. And all of the big guns have run as well as you could hope. So it just sets it up superbly for what's going to be a, a brilliant contest for the 100th Cox Plate this year. And obviously, uh, you know, Alligator Blood's going to be better suited, I reckon, back to that valley. Uh, it's going to be an interesting tactical race with um, obviously Zaki going to race on speed as well. Uh, Mr. Brightside was another one that was kind of climbing over their backs late, Shane. Yeah. First of all, Alligator Blood, I'm still not 100% convinced he wants 2,000 metres. Uh, so I've got the question mark against him. If the race was at 1,600 metres, 1,800 metres of Cox Plate, I'd be saying superb chance. But just I, I'm not convinced yet, knowing my luck, he'll probably come out and win the race easily. But um, <laughs> the, the other horse that you mentioned, Mr Brightside, I mean, he's been just remarkable the way that he's just got better and better and better over the last 12 months. Now, yeah, he's probably at 2,000 metres, not bang on target with the others. But he's going really well, and it'd be interesting to see if they do press on for the Cox Plate or if they go in another direction. My personal opinion is I think he's fantastic at a mile, uh, and I would love to see him go to the big mile race at Flemington during Cup Week. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the horse is in form, and that's what I just keep coming back to. All of the big guns for the Cox Plate are well and truly in form now. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's just so exciting. I reckon it's going to be uh, the race of the spring. Um, you know, if these last couple of races uh, have been anything to go by, that is for sure. Hey, uh, what about uh, J Mac, James McDonald, mate? Uh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant on the weekend. Of course, uh, you know, Gold Mile, uh, Animo, he's just uh, really stamping himself as uh, nearly the best jockey in the land at the moment. I'm not, I, I just said nearly because um, I reckon there's a couple others that are pretty good as well, but uh, he's just a superstar, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I, I love Jay Mack. I'm going to, you know, in my years of covering racing, I've got him right up there as, as one of the best jockeys I've ever yep. seen. Um, the thing about Jay Mack, though, he's now in the plump spot where every major stable with every good horse wants him associated with him, uh, wants to be associated with him. So he really is getting the pick of the rides, whether it be from Godolphin, whether it be from Waller, even a few other stables. They they want him on the, the, the best horses. So it really gives him every chance to keep adding to that amazing haul of big race wins that he's got. But, you know, put him alongside a Jamie Carr and, and you know, even Damien Oliver, who, you know, he's becoming uh, the veteran status now, but he's, he's one of the all-time greats, if not the all-time great. Um, you know, you've got all these jockeys, Huey Bowman, um, you know, it's, it's, there's such talent in the ranks. It was interesting this week, we saw Zach Purton get a seven-timer in Hong okay. Kong uh, right. on Sunday. And Zach was coming out in the media saying, you know, James McDonald really needs to get on a plane and, and go and base himself somewhere else around the world if, uh, you know, he wants to make some really big money, particularly in, in Asia. And uh, I thought that was nice sparring there by Zach. But the reality is, in Australia at the moment, the dominant force is J-Mac when it comes to the jockeys. He's getting the plum rides. The biggest stables want him. And there's no need to move for, for quite some time while you're, you're in that position. He's still earning some good dollars too. Don't worry about that. <laughs> hey, uh, other good story last weekend. Lindsay Smith, Tuvalu, Chrissy Wells, of course, the Gypsy King, mate. I love him. Uh, a great story too, Jared Fry. First group one. He's done the hard yards. You, you would have had a fair bit to do with him uh, your time back at racing.com, mate. I know myself. I've had a bit to do with him. He's a ripper. A really good story, wasn't it, Shane? Yeah, it's nothing better when you see, you know, uh, jockeys and trainers who have been in the game for a long time and they've, they've really, you know, thrown all of their energy into the sport, finally get that big race success when they come in the Group 1 because, you know, at the end of the day, it's the Group 1s that people are remembered for more than anything else. You know, you can win as many premierships or or other, but, you know, you, you really want to have that Group 1 uh, attachment next to your name. And I thought Jared gave uh, Tuvalu every hope in the run. Uh, and it was just great when, uh, you know, he went for home and Tuvalu put put a gap on the, the rivals in the, in the Turak and was able to really stick to his guns over the concluding stages of win the race. Jared was thrilled. He deserves it. Great to see Lindsay Smith again. He's been a master trainer for many, many years, of course, originally over in, in WA before shifting operations to Victoria. Fantastic trainer, gets results. And, yeah, Tuvalu, we talked about this also a bit, uh, and you know, in the, the lead-up to, to last week. Just was bang on target for that race. Drew well, 
right weight range and certainly delivered, you know, and, and a horse that sort of had hovered under the radar for, for quite some time, uh, but really deserved that success. It was, yeah, it was just a, such a great day of racing at Caulfield last weekend. And got out to a pretty nice price too, uh, the old Tuvalu as well. The old boy, something for the battlers there. Something for the battlers, mate. Hey, listen, let's have a look at our four group ones this weekend. Kicking off with the big one, uh, the Everest, of course. We know there's been a hell of a lot of rain. The weather hasn't been the best in Sydney. There's a little bit to come over the next couple of days, they think. Nature Strip Drew Barrier uh, 12. Uh, the market, all thanks to Palmer Bet, uh, has Nature Strip at the favourite at $1.95. Lost and Runnings at 7 bucks. Eduardo at $10. Jackano at 10 bucks. Mars Crusader at $12. Private Eye at 14 bucks. Marzu at 17 And Geiger Kick at $21. Shano, how do you see the Everest? Is it a lady and Mazir? Do you think that uh, the best sprinter in the land uh, and in the world in Nature Strip gets the job done again on Saturday? Yeah, I think he does. Uh, quite simply, I have not seen any horse get to his level when he's targeted a big race, you know, and everything's gone to plan. There is no horse that can go with him. You know, he's just been a marvel and he's a remarkable sprinter in that every year he's come back that uh, he's got better. Um, yeah, yeah he, he really is a freak. I when he first started emerging, you know, when he was uh, with uh, uh, Robert Spurden, then he went to, to Darren Weir and, of course, ended up with uh, Chris Waller. You could just see every time he stepped out of the racetrack because he was a nutcase in the early days. Like, he was a horse that would over-race, he would sweat up, he was just this big, monstrous powerhouse, but he didn't know how to put it all together. But what you've seen with Waller over the period of time, he's just kept refining him and refining him and refining him. And now he's pretty much bomb-proof. What we saw when he went to, to Royal Ascot, unbelievable. He came back from that break. His first up win uh, in the shorts was devastating. Um, his peak rating is head and shoulders above his rivals. So I, I don't care too much that he's drawn the outside barrier because I think we still don't know what's happening with the weather. You know, there's a bit to play out. Yeah. Regardless, it's going to be yeah. um, choppy underfoot. So I don't mind him drawn out wide because it's going to give J-Mac every opportunity in the run to have him wherever he wants. And when he presses the button, most likely at the top of the straight at Ramwick, I think he's just going to go past them all. And if you're getting that sort of $1.95 mark um, at the moment, to me, he's the worthy favourite. He's the one to beat. I mean, who, who knocks him off? Eduardo's beaten him a few times, but yeah. usually in the lead-up runs, he's never been able to knock him off in a, in a big one. Lost and running, terrific when winning the Premier, but to me, he's still that little bit behind. And I know my old mate Wayne Hawks uh, was fairly bullish about Mask Crusader in the press this week back home. So, I mean, he's at around the $12. He's, to me, probably the value runner because third up after two trials, two solid runs, you know he's going to be strong late. He's the one that perhaps you could have something on each way at a big, big price. But for me, Nature's Strip is clearly the one to beat. I can't see him getting beaten, and I think he'll win his second Everest. Well, what about the Jack and O Golden Mile form? It's been pretty uh, frank pretty well, hasn't it, really? It has. Uh, the only concern I've got there, you know, Golden Mile, I, and we're with him last week in the Caulfield Guineas. Great to see him win that race. Yeah. It was a great bunch finish. Too. Yeah, yeah, great ride. Like, he's, he's scrambled home. I think that Caulfield Guineas field is fairly evenly matched. Yeah. Golden Mile was the best of that group, but I'm not thinking he's a, a superstar. He's a very nice horse. Yeah. Jack and O, when he won the, the Golden Rose to start prior, long way off them, had to really, really finish hard and, and, and took him almost the whole straight at Rose Hill to get up and, and win that prize. So for me, back to 1,200 metres on a choppy track, I'm just not sure where he's going to be in the run. And for that reason, I just keep diverting to what we know. Nature Strip can be yeah. on speed and absorb pressure. He can settle midfield and finish over the top of them. The one to beat, Mask Crusader, perhaps the value bet at, at $12 to, to have something on as a you know an out, outside saver, but Nature Strip to win easily. And the conditions, you know, Nature Strip just thrives in any conditions, to be honest. Um, firm, wet, doesn't really matter. So uh, he's, a, he's a champion. Yeah, sit back and enjoy and watch an absolute uh, champion of our time go around in the Everest on the weekend. Caulfield Cup, of course, it is the feature down at Caulfield. I'm going to be heading uh, along to Caulfield. I'm looking forward to it too. There is a fair bit of rain around, obviously, today and uh, a little bit coming in the next 24, 48 hours as well. So you'd expect, Shane, it's going to be softish. Interested to see what they're going to do with the rail. I know they were talking about moving it out six metres. Um, I, I don't know. They might not do that now, especially after racing today and the way that uh, horses are kind of getting out and fit, uh, panning out wide and stuff. So uh, it's going to be a watch this space. All thanks to Palmer at the market. Smoke and Romans, of course, and the Ma Eustace team at five bucks. Richie Benno at seven bucks. Nonconformist at nine dollars. Inspirational Guild, 11 bucks. Dewey's at 11. Gold Trip, 11. Allegron, 13. Knight's Order, 15. Um, 
What are your thoughts here? Like, you know, there's a there's a few knocks on Smoke and Romans, but I'll tell you what, this horse has done absolutely nothing wrong and it's got the Kieran Ma David Eustace polish. Yeah, look, I, I'll tell you what, I, I love the Caulfield Cup. It's historically it's great, one right? of my favourite betting races all year. Like, I love it. Really, really love this race because it's a high pressure 2400 meter yep. race. They usually go at a strong tempo and, and you can often get odds about a horse that you like. So, love this race. I was finding it a bit of a head scratcher over the last few weeks trying to work out which way do we go. Um, but I've really swung back to, and I hate saying this in a handicap race, but I've really swung back to the favorite. I think Smoke and Romans ticks every box you could hope for for a horse going towards a race like the Caulfield Cup. He won the Naturalism Stakes, he was super strong on that occasion. Form out of that race has gone, you know, been really, really good because he's then come out and won a Turnbull Stakes at Group One level. Yeah, the right. thing about the Turnbull Stakes, you know, he proved that he was a tough uh, middle distance horse on that occasion. He beat a good quality field, and importantly, out of that race, you know, he came out with arguably the best run in the race, uh, and he's dropping in weight down to fifty one and a half kilos for the Caulfield Cup. So at five dollars, I think he's clearly the horse to beat. Um, you know, great trainees, uh, training operation behind him uh, with Kiramar David Eustace. And I think he's just going to get every conceivable hope in the run, regardless of how strong they go. He'll be in the right spot if, uh, you know, if it's a strong pace or a, a mid-tempo race. He's going to be there to put himself right in the thick of things, you know, once they enter the home straight. So for me, Smoke and Romans, he's got that ability to absorb pressure and kick. $5, he's the worthy favourite. I'm putting him on top. Outside of that, I do think there are a couple of horses you really need to factor in. I think Benno's going really well, but it's kind of found in the market at around that $7 mark. And on um, the backup, obviously, which is always a little concern heading into a big group one feature, isn't it? Correct. But I don't mind it if you're going into it where you've got a bit of give underground. You know, it was yeah. a, a firm track on the weekend, but if he gets a track where there's a bit of give this week, uh, I think he's going to be quite strong there at the end of the race. So I'm happy to... T- Put him in yep. the, the thicker things. The other ones I'm still really keen on. Gold Trip, who was confident about going into the uh, the Turnbull Stakes. He was caught wide on that occasion. Didn't have the best of luck. He hasn't been beaten far, and his best European form probably has him as legitimately the horse to beat in the race. So I think Gold Trip will run really well. And Godolphin's Allegron um, is the other one that I really want to factor in. Missed the run in the Turnbull. Terrific win at Ro- at uh, Ramwick the start prior in the Kingston Town. Um, and, yeah, he wouldn't be there if he wasn't bang on target for the race. So I think I'm happy to go Smoke and Romans, my main bet in the Caulfield Cup. $5, I think the right price, worthy favourite. But of the others, Gold Trip's the one that appeals each way at around $11. And the other value bets, I'll have two value bets, Gold Trip at $11, Allegron at $13. But I'm pretty keen on Smoke and Romans. He's just come from nowhere this campaign and uh, he's a worthy favourite for the Caulfield Cup. Love it. Absolutely love it, mate. Inspirational Girl is the other one that I reckon, Shane. Just go and have a look at the replay. Gets the softish track conditions, which I reckon right up the alley as well. And uh, I thought it was a nice run last start as well. Kind of really hit the line uh, hit the line nicely. So uh, I, I agree. I, I reckon Gold Troop's probably the one. Um, you know, sat three wide, had to do plenty of work last start. I know there was a lot of knockers and stuff on the horse, but just got that Kieran Ma, David Eustace Polish. They're so good at training stays, and especially for feature races. Uh, they do such a magnificent job. Let's head back up to Ramwick on Saturday, the Kosciuszko. And all thanks to Palmer, but the market sees it. It's me. He's our favourite at $4.40. Front page at 5 bucks. Far too easy at $5. Handle the truth at $7.50. Anathol at $10. Arkado at 14 bucks. Another one, 18 bucks. Fender at 20 bucks. And Nemeth at $21. Shano, I must admit, hard to line all this up for mine. What are your thoughts on the Kosciuszko? Yeah, I'm very much the same. This is the, the one of the big features I'm the least confident in going into the race. Um, look, I've settled on It's Me. Uh, she won this race, I think it was two years ago now. Um, you know, she's had her fair share of issues along the way. Uh, but this daughter of Shadis Award looks to be well and truly back on track this campaign. She was able to win at Eagle Farm first up. But it was, you know, in a lower rating uh, race quality-wise, but she was never really, uh, you know, in doubt on that occasion. The more I look at the replay, the more you see, yep, she's come back. She needed that hit out, and it proved that she was on track for heading towards the Kosciuszko. She's then gone to the Group 2 Shiraco, and I thought that effort was terrific. She's been beaten less than a length on that occasion behind Shades of Rose, Electric Girl, and and Palacipian. And I think that, to me, says 
she's now back on track for this race to win it a second time. She'll settle probably midfield in the run. She's got the best jockey in the country, James McDonald, aboard. She can handle give. There's no issue there. And I just think, you know, she's she ticks more boxes than some of her rivals to win the race. So I'm, I'm pretty keen of those in a race that, you know, is not my favourite race to be to be betting on this week. I just think all roads keep coming back to to it's me to win it. Um, and I think she's still, even though she's now a six-year-old mare, she's still been lightly raced over a career and she's got lots of ability that potentially is still untapped. So you're getting that sort of, um, you know, she's a favourite in the market at the moment. I think she's a worthy favourite and I'm happy to be with her. Of those outside of her, I think the value bet could be Art Cadeau who won this race uh, last year first up. He's now similar pre- preparation coming to the race this year. He's got a fair bit of quality about him. Um, he's got Damien Lane in the saddle. And I think Art Cadeau, um, drawn down uh, in barrier number three, should be able to have him right. settling fairly handy to the pace. I don't think he'll be bang on speed, but he should be no further than, say, four or five lengths off the pace and get his chance at the top of the straight. I think, you know, at double figure odds each way, probably the value bet. So we're seeing two former winners in the race, probably the, the top two Raiders for mine. Uh, but again, not the most exciting race for me, betting-wise, the Kosciuszko. I just think it's wide open. Yeah, let's move along and have a look at the Silver Eagle. Of course, uh, race is abandoned last Saturday, so the Silver Eagle heads to uh, to this weekend and uh, really makes for a huge day. Uh, the market, all thanks to Palmavet, Mr. Mozart's our favourite at three sixty. Star Tandy's at five bucks. Espiona six fifty. Now I reckon Espiona was about eight bucks last week. So Waterford at seven bucks. Uh, Valana at eight dollars fifty. In the Congo ten bucks. Lock Eagle eleven dollars. Brigantine fifteen. Lavish Girl sixteen bucks. And Kiss Sum at sixteen dollars um it's interesting just to see that market change ever so slightly and does the extra seven days does it have any impact at all do you reckon shano yeah i'm hoping it has a positive impact for our selections but no to be <laughs> honest it's, it's one of those things where uh, seven days i'm not too concerned about it um uh, but i think what it's done though there's a couple of horses that have sort of missed this race that were originally scheduled to run in it i think it's going to be a, a really good chance particularly uh, a good contest because the fact we might have drying ground, a little bit drying ground compared to what we had last week. Last yes. week was a disaster and it probably would have been a complete mess of a, a race. But I think the fact if we can get some nice weather in that 24-hour period leading up to, to Ramwick, every horse should be able to get their chance here. I, I did like Espiona last week. Um, I'm, I'm happy to stick with her again. Um, you know, to me, she's she's got the most overall ability of any horse in this race from what we've seen thus far. You know, go back 12 months when she won at Flemington, everyone was calling her a world beater. The reason they were saying that was because she was legitimately outstanding with amazing closing fractions on that occasion. And I think that's the best thing about her. When she turns it on, there's not another horse in the race I don't think that can go with her. Yeah. If you go back through her, her form this campaign, uh, when she ran in the gold pendant uh, over 1,400 metres last start, she finished fourth, beating about a length and a half behind Nimely. Uh, she had very good closing fractions in that race. So I think it was the fastest last 600 and fastest last 200. Um, you know, she's she's got her quirks. She'll settle off the speed and she's not the most, um, you know, easy to watch bear once she she hits full stride you know she does have a little bit of her idiosyncrasies a little bit erratic on occasions but once she lets down she's got the ability just to power away from her rival so i'm happy to side with espiona as the the horse to beat if you're getting around that six dollar fifty mark i think that's still worthy of an each way each way bet the other one i like um is the lightly race waterford again another waller runner bowman's in the saddle drawn the outside gate a horse that'll get a fair way back off the pace. But I'll tell you what, those two wins at his past two starts at Rose Hill have just been simply outstanding. Uh, the last time we saw him was when winning uh, two weeks ago, uh, benchmark 78 class over 1,500 metres, and he was just terrific on that occasion from off speed. He was so strong late in the piece. He subsequently had a trial since. He looked good on that occasion too. And I think he's a bit of an X-Factor horse, Waterford. So he's the value bet. You're getting, I think, around $9 with Palmer Bet. So I think Waterford, $9 value. Espiona, the better best bet for, for all sense and purposes in that race at $6.50. But I think Waller's going to walk away with the Silver Eagle this year. Yeah, I reckon uh, Chris Wallace has trained Espiona specifically for this race and we'll have the horse Cherry Ripe on the weekend and 650 might be a blessing uh, when they cross the finishing line uh, at the end of the day. Hey, listen, what about uh, some other bets around the country? What do you got for us, uh, big fella? Anything that uh, you're keen on? 
Yeah, to be honest, uh, I'm finding it a bit of a head scratch at the moment. Um, there was a horse I, I don't mind um, at Rampwick and, you know, on a, on a massive weekend, um, you know, where there's so much great action. I'm, I'm going to the last race at Rampwick on the day, which is the um, the the Angst Stakes, a Group 3 contest. And I thought um, uh, Polly Gray would run a really good race in that, um, getting around sort of that $4 mark for Polly Gray. Uh, but I think she's really well placed and I'm really keen on her in hopefully it's not the get out stakes but uh, one of the last races on on a terrific day of racing but it doesn't matter where you're looking whether it be Caulfield or Ramwick uh, you're going to find something that's really going to entertain you this weekend it's just going to be an amazing amazing uh, few hours of racing yeah and I, I'm going to go to Caulfield uh, I like a couple early on in the day so get a little bit of a bank Shano uh, the first race <laughs> at Caulfield horse number one Kang, uh, Quang Troy from the uh, the Paddy Payne Yard. First up, it's about uh, $3.10, 320 all thanks to the boys at Palm. But I reckon that horse has got a heap of ability. And in race two, there's a horse uh, from the Nick Ryan Yard, Captain Joey. Won't be any uh, big price. I think it'll be about $2.220. Uh, but he, go and have a look at the replay. It was enormous last start. The Oliver sticks fat. And uh, Barrier 14 is not going to be a knock, I reckon, the way the track's racing. So uh, I reckon we can get a bit of a bank early. Shane, eh? Love it. I'm excited. Nothing better than building a, a bank early in the day and then just watch it uh, hopefully grow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, gamble responsibly. That is the key message. Uh, all thanks to the team at Palmer Bet. Um, download the app, get involved. It is really, really simple, a great organisation to be part of, but do it in a responsible manner. It is going to be a fantastic weekend of Group 1 racing. Ramwick, of course, in Sydney. Caulfield in Melbourne. Shane, you have a wonderful weekend, mate, and look forward to catching up with you next week. You too, Maddie. Can't wait.